Hi, I'm John Miles, designer of the 3120A phase noise test probe from Symmetricom. In this demo, we're going to use the 3120A to learn as much as we can about the short-term noise and jitter characteristics of a high-performance crystal oscillator. Now, there are a lot of things to know about oscillator noise and jitter, but there are only a few good ways to measure it, and most of them are either expensive, difficult, time-consuming, or all of the above. In that respect, the Symmetricom test sets are truly revolutionary. The oscillator I'm measuring belongs to a class of parts referred to as ultra-low noise, or ULN. These units are challenging to measure because their noise floors tend to be near the spec limits of the best commercial instrumentation. They also tend to have low flicker corner frequencies, which means that by 1 kHz they're already approaching their broadband floor. In these cases, it can be difficult to find a reference that can meet or exceed the expected performance of the device under test. Fortunately, the Symmetricom 3120A, like our other phase noise test sets, lets us cheat. Not only is the reference oscillator not required to match the DUT frequency, but we can actually improve the measurement floor by choosing a reference at a higher frequency. To measure this 5 MHz ULN oscillator, I'm going to use a 25 MHz reference. This is a decent oscillator, but it's nowhere near as quiet as our 5 MHz part is expected to be. But because the reference frequency is 5 times higher, the 3120A's measurement floor is actually improved by about 14 dB. The 3120A's broadband floor at 25 MHz is rated at minus 165 dBc per hertz, and coincidentally, that's about the same as the phase noise spec of our 25 MHz reference oscillator. But since we're using that reference to measure a device at 5 MHz, we should be able to see down to minus 175 to minus 180, depending on how long we let the cross-correlation process run. That's good enough to measure our 5 MHz ULN. I'm starting the measurement now, and as usual with the 3120A, I won't need to wait very long to see some data coming in. It takes about 20 seconds to observe the phase noise and AM noise down to 1 Hz from the carrier. But again, we're measuring a very high performance part here. The shaded area of the graph represents the 3120A's estimate of its own phase noise floor. And as you can see, it's basically the same as the real noise trace. We're off to a good start, but we need to let this measurement run for at least a few minutes to get an idea of what this oscillator can really do. Okay, it's five minutes later. We're back and we have some good data. Our ULN oscillator is specified to reach minus 175 dBc per hertz at 10 kHz from the carrier, and that's almost exactly what we're looking at. Beyond 1 kHz, we have a reasonably flat phase noise trace, and the instrument noise estimate is several dB lower, so we can have some confidence in these results, at least in the broadband region. Closer to the 1 over F corner, around 100 Hz, the trace variance is higher, and there's little or no margin between the instrument floor estimate and the phase noise trace. This is a nice smooth flicker corner, and we're measuring the noise here at a remarkably low level, but we can't be 100% sure where that corner really is. Also, note what's happening closer in. The instrument floor has fallen below the measured trace again, and the trace itself seems somewhat higher than expected. The ULN oscillator is rated by its manufacturer at minus 150 dBc per hertz at 10 hertz, but we're measuring about minus 140. What's happening here is that, all other things being equal, a good 5 MHz oscillator will have much lower close-in phase noise than an equally good 25 MHz oscillator. That's true even after you account for the improvement that I mentioned earlier of 14 dB. So between 1 Hz and 100 Hz, the 3120A is not what's limiting the measurement floor. The 25 MHz reference is. Finally, I mentioned earlier that we were going to learn all we could about the performance of the oscillator under test. This particular 3120A is equipped with the signal statistics and AM noise options. So while I'm primarily interested in the phase noise graph, I can also have a look at the AM noise. We'd need to run this measurement a lot longer to get a true picture of the oscillator's AM noise performance, but this already looks very good. 
Again, the broadband floor is below minus 170, and there are no high-level spurs or unexpected breaks in the graph. I'll switch back to phase noise now, but I'll enable the AM trace as an overlay for comparison. I'm also going to enable the RMS jitter column in the legend table beneath the graph. And I'm going to control left click and control right click to set the limits of integration to the audio range between 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz. The integrated jitter in this region looks great, you know, less than 20 femtoseconds. So we've successfully used the 3120A to measure one of the best oscillators commercially available. Thanks for watching.